Hey guys, this is Chantel and today I wanted to take you along with me in the, on the process of how we set up these beds. So I'm not going to be making a bed exactly like these today. It's going to be a makeshift bed, but it's basically the same process. And we made a video on how to build these beds if you're interested in learning how to build raised beds for cheap. We built 16 foot beds for just under or just over $70, I don't remember. Around $70, something like that. You can check that video out. I'll link it in the description box below. But for now, I wanted to show you what I do to prepare the beds before I start filling them with the soil and what goes in first and all that stuff. And you can see behind me the beautiful sweet potatoes and the kale, which is a little droopy, looks like it needs some water. And the beautiful zinnias and the butterflies absolutely love them. I see tons of monarchs and painted ladies and black swallowtails and tiger swallows and it's just so beautiful, so, so beautiful. The weather today is at 79 degrees Fahrenheit, so it's nice, it's windy, the, the wind keeps it a little more tolerable. It's still humid, of course, and the sun beats down on you, but I totally forgot my hat, I should go get it. So you might not be able to hear me very well, but I'll try to get close to the camera so that you guys can hear me because it's a little windy. Again, it makes the weather nice, but might make it a little hard for you guys to hear me. I still don't have a microphone on, so um, maybe one day I'll get a microphone. <laughs> maybe when I hit 1,000 subscribers. What do you think about that? So go ahead, hit, hit that subscribe button if you aren't subscribed yet. These are the two beds that I'm going to be working on today. This was just a little mishap. My husband was mowing the lawn over here, and he happened to have the uh, blades on the lawnmower a little bit uh, too low so it ended, ended up ripping this mat over here so the grass started growing in here. I'll just mow over it and I'll pull the grass up and I'll put down a new mat over here. But for now we're going to, the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to take the lawnmower and mow down the grass as low as I can without ripping this mat. So that would be set on setting four, like four inches, I think, above the ground. And uh, that usually keeps it from hitting the mat and mows down the grass. And then this way I could start working on it. And by the way, these beds are three inches wide. This one is a little bit shorter than these beds. You can see uh, this is how long these normal beds are and this one starts right here. So it's it's about maybe 10 inches, uh, sorry 10 feet, not 10 inches. <laughs> that would be very small. Yeah it's about 10 feet long this one and that one over there is 16 feet long. And the reason why this happened is because as you can see over here we have a well so we wanted to have access to the well so we kept about three or four feet between the well and the first raised bed next to it over here and eventually after i'm done with this what i would like to do is to create another bed over here i'm not sure if i want to create just a full length bed or divide it the same way. Maybe I'll just divide it so that it's easy to get in and out between the beds and the trees over here. So I think that's, that's what I'll do. Although it is nice to have just one long bed where I could just plant corn or whatever in. This bed probably won't be, I won't be planting corn in this bed because as you can see the pear tree is here, which needs pruning. <laughs> and. Um, it's going to shade some of the bed in the late afternoon. And as it grows, of course, I'm, I'm going to be pruning it so uh, this bed still receives sun and I don't want the pear tree to grow super big where uh, we won't be able to reach it except with a ladder. That's not what we want. So we want it to stay at a manageable size 
and we are trying our best to do that so it's a little tricky because it just wants to grow so much so I'm trying to figure out uh, the best way on how to approach that because it's I've noticed it behaves a little bit differently than uh, apple trees it grows at a much faster rate than the apple trees do so anyways back to this uh, this bed would probably I would probably grow things like kale or broccoli or something like that or spinach something that likes the cooler weather so that's the idea anyways so in case this tree over here and and the other tree on that side end up shading this bed over here that would be the purpose of these actually two beds over here uh, so let's go ahead and get the lawnmower going and mow these two beds You can see it looks so much better right now. This whole area needs to be mowed. Am I gonna do it now? No. <laughs> so I'm going to rip up that crab grass over there so that I can kind of tell where the beginning of the bed is and where the end of the bed is. And I should have probably brought the landscaping mat, but I forgot. So let's rip up the crab grass and see what we got there and then we'll figure out what to do next. This stuff is nasty. <laughs> It is loving it near the well. It's I'm noticing that it's mostly grown over the mat and it just put down its roots into the mat. I've reached a point where I now need a shovel. So I'm gonna go grab a shovel. So I went to grab a shovel and this is what I grabbed. I got the landscape fabric over here. This is the Dwip Pro. I forgot what grade it is. I'll put a link in the description box below. And this stuff is awesome. I also did get the shovel. <laughs> I got my kneeling pad, a mallet, and a bunch. Oh, oh, can't forget that. I can't get outside without my hori hori knife. This thing is a lifesaver. And a bunch of landscaping stable a stable staples not stable <laughs> i'm not getting a stable over here uh anyways so these are galvanized stables I keep saying stables these are gal galvanized staples and they are i think six inches deep and they will last for many seasons they don't rust like the regular metal staples uh, and these are just absolutely awesome. I love them because the wind doesn't blow the landscape uh, fabric out when you use these staples. Uh, whenever I use the small staples that are metal, uh, what happened is that um, whenever a windstorm would come or after the winter when the snow melts um, and we get a lot of wind during that season, it just rips up all the landscape fabric and then I have to redo it all over again if you don't have anything over the landscape fabric that is so this is why I prefer these things they are long and they are sturdy also they're not like flimsy and um, they're galvanized so they're not gonna rust on you or it would take them a long time to rust okay let's get this crab grass out of here okay so the crab grass is out right there and it was like fused to the part of the mat that was ripped out so I was having a hard time digging it out so I had to actually cut the mat around it so that I can dig it out my neighbor's mowing his lawn 
just kidding. So I'm going to actually be putting the mat down first and then we'll move on to the next step on the beds because I just don't want this to happen again. I don't want to deal with it. It's a pain. I'm sure you'll understand. <laughs> first I'm going to fix this part of the, of the mat over here and staple it down so that I know what I'm working with. I like to make sure that the mat is tight so that we don't trip over it or the lawnmower chews it like what happened over here. So I tend to go a little bit heavy on the staple. You also want to make sure to overlap the mats over each other at least an inch or two. Um, I would err on the two inches side so that anything, any weeds or grass that grows underneath them does not have the chance to sneak in between the mats and get to the light and start growing and just destroy all your work. So overlapping is a good thing and the more you overlap the better it is. With this landscaping fabric, there's a fuzzy side and a smooth side. <laughs> so you want the fuzzy side to face the ground so that it can grip to the ground and doesn't shift around, especially when you step on it. And the smooth side goes on top. So this way, if any weeds or something like that go, grows through it, it's super easy to rip. While if you have that, on top it's going to slip on the bottom and if weeds grow through it it's going to be really hard to rip them out. I like to pierce the middle first and then I stretch out the sides make sure they're super tight and hope to not hit a rock. I know I brought scissors I have no idea where they are so I gotta look for them. They were on top of the lawnmower and they blend in so well with the lawnmower same color. <laughs> I'm going to work on this side first, stretch it, and hit a rock, take it out, and try again. And hit another rock, or the same rock. Try again. And now when I get to this, I'm going to bend it inside out or outside in because you can see um, this part over here is sticking out so I'm just going to bend it so now it's time to work on the beds now I'm going to go around the edges of the beds and if I see any grass or any weeds sticking out I'm just going to grab them and pull them because if I use a weed whacker I'm going to rip the mat over here and we don't want that to happen so I'm just going to use my hands you could also use shears if you want you could do that I might need a scissor over here or pruners and just clean up the edges like that so what I was thinking is that we need a plant with noise-canceling noise capability. I don't know if anyone has invented that yet. You know what I mean? <laughs> I finished cleaning up the edges of the beds and now for the next step. Normally, in this next step, I use cardboard. You lay it out over the grass, make sure you overlap it so that you don't have any places where the grass and the weeds can escape out and grow into the soil and then out into the sunlight and fill your bed with weeds. Uh, so you want to make sure you have really good overlap with the cardboard. The same thing that, you, that I said about the landscaping fabric, you want to do that with the cardboard. I am going to be using some cardboard, but because I reached a point where I was going to work on these beds and I ran out of cardboard and then some stuff happened and I wasn't able to work on them but anyways because I ran out of cardboard this is what I got let me show you this is well not the box 
what's inside it right here now this is they call it living mulch or not living mulch sorry uh, like a compostable mulch it's basically a thick paper so I use it the same way I use cardboard and I ordered the three foot uh, wide one if they had a four foot that's what I should have gotten but because the beds are actually a little bit wider than three feet the ones I, when I you know the end like the way how they are right now once they're done they are going to be three feet uh, so this is not enough to cover the edges however I roll this out and I put it in the middle of the bed and the edges will still need some cardboard so that's what I'm going to be doing and I got this from Gardner Supply Company not sponsored <laughs> I don't know if I said this but basically what this does is it's going to smother the weeds out and stop them from growing and you will basically just get a raised bed uh, just make sure to not dig into the cardboard in the first season uh, and it's going to decompose super fast especially when you are using the bed because you're going to be watering and using it so uh, with the more you water the quicker everything is going to decompose the cardboard is car made mostly of carbon and the grass is or you know along with the weeds is mostly nitrogen so those two actually react with each other and they decompose each other <laughs> Uh, so it works out perfectly. So let's go ahead and lay this stuff out and get these beds ready. I forgot to mention that when you are laying them out, if you live in a windy area, it would be helpful to have a something that you can put on top of the, this cardboard or this uh, mulch thingy while you are laying it out so that the wind doesn't blow it away everywhere. So I have some wood and I'm going to also be using the shovel and I'm going to use it to stop it from flying everywhere. That was such a pain. <laughs> three times. Three? Four? I don't remember. Basically enough times to drive me insane. So hopefully it stays in place. I put everything diagonally on it so that it is less likely to fly like a sail. And I'm going to go grab some cardboard and put them on the edges. Hopefully it won't fly. It's sort of comical, but it's not. <laughs> and let's see, is it still standing? Yep, still is. So let's finish it up. Normally, when you are using cardboard to make a vegetable bed or something you want to eat out of, even if it's a flower bed that has flowers that you can eat that one day maybe you want to eat, like maybe roses that you can make rose water out of or whatever it is. Normally you want to use something that's not glossy, that doesn't have plastics on it or lots of paint. 
you want to use the brown, brown cardboard because it's the least toxic of them all. And you also want to remove any stickers. But feeling lazy, and this cardboard is going to sit on the edges. So if there's something that's not going to uh, come off, I'm not going to bother taking it off. If it comes off super easily, then I'll take it off. But again, do as I say and not as I do. That should be the motto. Should it? No? Maybe not. <laughs> okay, so I'm taking all the stickers as much as I can and all the tape. I don't like to leave tape in if I can, uh, just because it, like, it doesn't let anything go through it, like if I'm putting something over it, the tape is just going to act like plastic, and plus it has chemicals in it also. Uh, so I just basically open it up on both sides, I rip this side, and when I'm using it on the edges, I like to rip these sides over here like that so that I can overlap them so that they don't, um, so that the grass doesn't grow in between them. So let's go ahead and get this going. Seriously, I'm not going to be able to finish this job. Well, since it's so windy and the wind keeps blowing my cardboard and everything that I'm putting down, we're going to move to the next step. So I have to empty the trailer. The trailer is empty. Let's go. So the next step is to fill the beds with compost. This is the same compost that I have over in the old beds and I really don't like it. So I'm going to put it as a bottom layer in the beds and it is going to decompose and even though it's not the greatest compost, it's still going to provide the beds with good nutrients and especially because it drains so quickly. I want it to be at the bottom. I don't want it to be at the top because if I plant seeds, it's just I'm going to have to water them like every five minutes. <laughs> so that's why this thing is going down in, in the lower layer and again so that it can continue to decompose. So right now I'm going to fill the trailer over there with the compost and we are going to put the compost on the cardboard thingy mulch thingy and I might not be able to finish this video today so I might have to finish that on a separate day but that's what I'm gonna be doing right now just filling dirt it's boring you don't have to watch it the dirt is here and we are going to move it and put it over this tarp thingy this uh, cardboard mulch I'm going to put the compost only in the middle of this for now, of the cardboard mulch, and um, then uh, I can start putting the cardboard on the sides and spread the compost over it to hold it in place. You can see that I covered all the grass with the cardboard, whatever was left over and was not covered with this cardboard mulch paper thingy, I came and I stuck these cardboard in and I made sure to overlap them everywhere uh, because I don't want any grass sticking out. So now I'm going to take the compost and spread it over the cardboard trying to make sure to just keep it where the grass ends 
and stop there because that's going to be the layout of the bed. And of course, it's always handy to have kit, tool, to have kit tools with you to help you do the job. I like to stop before I reach the last piece of the cardboard so that I can easily overlap them without any weight over them. So right now I'm just going to finish this whole thing over here and put cardboard down and spread the mulch and then the next day we are going to come back for the next step. So I'll see you tomorrow. So it's the next day. And we are in the butterfly garden area and we, I'm going to show you the next step. This right here is the next step. So we are going to be taking this wood over here, not all of it, but the thick logs, and we are going to be hauling them into the vegetable garden and I'm going to use them to lay out the bed with these logs. These are going to form the frame of this bed. So normally after you put down the cardboard and you put the compost to hold down the, comp the cardboard, what you would want to do is put the frame of the bed. But this time I'm not using a, a regular raised bed because we kind of put a limit on how many beds we want to build this year. So the rest of the beds are going to kind of be put together using uh, logs and stuff like that uh, or even rocks. If I find big rocks around the property, I'm just going to use them to line the rest of the beds. Or if I run out of stuff, I'm just going to mound them. And the next year when we are ready to build the beds, then we will build them and move the dirt a little bit and put the beds in. So uh, when I do put the beds in normally at this stage, I kind of shift the compost around a little bit uh, to, sh to form it into the shape of the bed because the way how we designed the bed, there is a uh, piece of wood that goes right in the middle of the bed uh, to kind of help keep it together. And also because uh, we are using eight foot long pieces of wood and we are connecting them together uh, So if you watch that video, you will see how we built the, those beds exactly But anyways because of that piece of wood that's in the middle of the bed uh, We have to move the compost a little bit and it forms two beds that are connected together uh, So now I don't have to do that. I'm just going to put the logs in there and form them into a bed. So I need to go grab the trailer and fill it with these logs and whatever logs I can find on the property that we are not using for wood inside the house. And the reason why I'm using these logs is because these are from sumac trees and they have a sap in them. And when you do burn them inside, that sap can stick to the chimney and it can cause a chimney fire. So we don't want to use these inside. And sorry guys, I have fall allergies. So if you see a tissue box lying around, uh, that's why. <laughs> and it's been super windy, so it's just making it worse. It's blowing the pollen everywhere. But the weather's so nice, and today I think it's in the 70s, like the very low 70s or maybe 70 degrees. And it's going to be super nice this whole week. The highest that I saw it was going to get to was 84. So yay for nice weather. Now I can start moving stuff around and planting them everywhere. <laughs> but first I have to finish this project. So let's go get the trailer and fill it with this wood. With this wood.
here we are. I was able to find some bigger logs that were uh, about mm, maybe like eight inch diameter. Well, one big log that was that big and some longer ones. So we'll use those first and then we'll use the small one. But first, let me show you how the bed looks like after the second day. And we've been having a lot of wind. It didn't rain last night, but we have a lot of wind definitely. And the bed is looking great. All the cardboard is still in place and everything is still in place. I ran out of cardboard so I ended up using these, uh, what are they called, uh, like packing paper. And I saved these just for emergency <laughs> use and I'm glad I did save them. I had to fold them several times over, e over themselves and I used several papers and I put them here because if you just use one paper the grass is just gonna grow right through it so you have to have a thick layer of them to create resistance against the grass and they look ugly right now but eventually they will decompose and I'll be able to pull them out from around the sides after the grass dies out so everything is looking great oh yeah and I have these two logs over there I totally forgot about these two so now let's go ahead and get all this wood and lay it out. I may not need all of it, but it's here for me. And besides, we have this bed over here that I will just leave the wood on the mat over here so that I could easily lay out the wood over here on this bed whenever I'm ready to fix this one. I'm hoping that I'm going to be able to finish the second bed right after I am done with this bed over here. Yes. <laughs> it's hard to see. The sun's in my face. I'm glad I got all this wood because as you have seen, it used up a lot of wood, almost all of it. And it's kind of like a work of art. You have to sort of know how to match the pieces together and make sure to pick the right one for the right places. <laughs> but it's pretty easy. Now we are going to move to the next step. So let's go ahead and go there. So we are here again, but the reason we are here is not for compost, but for dirt. <laughs> And yes, there were weeds growing on it, but I bought this tarp, I covered it to stop the weeds from growing. The weeds are dead, so uh, I don't think they had any seeds in them. And even if they did, I don't think it matters. This dirt is full of seeds. So right now I'm going to take this dirt and fill it in the trailer and go back to the vegetable garden. And this dirt is going to go in the bed. I just finished filling the raised bed, so let me show you what it looks like. I mean, it is not perfect, and I was hoping I could fill it with a little more dirt, but I think I'll have to stop right here. I could if I want to stack some more wood on the sides, and this way I would be able to fill it with some more dirt, but I think um, this is going to be temporary, so I'm just going to stop over here, and let me show you what I did in the end over here. So I stacked this piece over that piece and I filled in the gaps with these two little pieces of wood over here. Is this bed going to last? No, I know that already. It is probably going to rot in a couple years or so, or maybe three, but it's going to do the job that I need it to do until we are able to build new beds. And right now we have a huge pile of dirt in our driveway that is sitting and needing to be moved and we bought that knowing that we want to build these raised beds because we didn't want to keep continuously keep paying for shipping and we also didn't realize at the time how much uh, how expensive wood is so um, we have a video already on how to build these raised beds and I will link that at the end of this video so if you are in a pinch um, and you don't have the budget to build a raised bed you could do what I did you could do it with bigger logs logs with wood that would last a little bit longer than this and you could cut them to shape uh, 
with a chainsaw. I don't have chainsaw skills, so I didn't go about cutting this wood. And I didn't want to use our uh, the wood that we were going to use for in the house and in, inside our wood stove. You could also screw the pieces of wood together with uh, diagonally with uh, a long screw and that would keep them in place. And for me, I'm going to fill in the gaps with some rocks so that the dirt doesn't come out. So now for the last step, what I'm going to do is I'm going to be setting up irrigation. But I'm not going to do it in this video. You can watch that in the video that will pop up over here. I went over that in extreme detail on how to, you can set up your irrigation system. But in these new beds, I did a few changes and let me show you. So in that video, I talked about using soaker hoses. In these new beds over here, I am using these drip tubes. I'm using quarter inch drip tubes and I tied them back to themselves at the end. Oh, not tied them back, connected them back to themselves at the end. So where can I see that? Right here, for example. There we go, you can see it's connected back to itself. And what this does, it ensures that the water is going to flow at the same rate in all the bed uh, because it equalizes the pressure. And another change that we did, my husband actually suggested that, is instead of elbowing over here, we just um, did a straight piece over here instead of going back in the bed uh, with an elbow like I did in the other video. And that saved a little bit on elbow pieces and um, on elbow grease also. <laughs> um, and also it starts right at the beginning of the bed. Um, now the reason why I did it didn't do it in the first time as I was concerned that this is going to stick up but it didn't it stayed down and these drip tubes uh, don't kind of uh, stick up like the soaker hoses were even though I did use soaker hoses in the previous video if you can't afford it I encourage you to go with drip tape because uh, for the long run it is a lot more efficient than soaker hoses are. Uh, that's my only advice to you when it comes to that. I The reason why I did go with soaker hoses the first time is because they were cheap and we didn't have a big budget for that at the time. So I just went with the cheaper option. They still work, but they have some issues. Uh, so I encourage you, if you have the budget for it, to go with a drip tape instead of the soaker hoses. So. Yep, go ahead, watch the how to set, set up a drip irrigation system and uh, an irrigation system. And also, I will link the video on how you can build uh, raised beds for cheap. And again, uh, this is how you can make a free raised bed <laughs> with an exception for the dirt, unless you have dirt over, um, unless you have good dirt in your property. So, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you again next time. Bye.